Test Group. Today we're going to be talking about the kinetic link principle. Now, this is actually used in pretty much every sport that involves power or speed in some way. The kinetic link principle, which is a biomechanical principle, is used in one way or another. So basically it refers to the transfer of momentum through the body. So any sport from tennis, baseball, rugby league, union, any throwing sport that involves power and force production through the body, transferal of momentum is one of the most important things. So how we do that, we can actually train that in the gym. That's a very trainable aspect, transferring momentum through the body. So most sports, basically they start from the ground up. There are exceptions, some sports are a little different, but most sports start from the ground up. Something like uh, tennis forehand, for instance, starts from the ground, legs generate most of the power. You transfer load from the legs to the trunk, so the hips extend, the trunk rotates, and that transfers force into the shoulder. So the end product, the summation of forces, is where we get our total top speed and our total top power from. Now the other area with that as well that's very important is the order of recruitment. So certain parts of the body need to recruit force before others. So the order of recruitment and how we do it has to start from the larger segments to the smaller segments. Now, so basically, these would be five segments of the body. If we maybe say number one is, a, is, a, is the legs or lower body, number two might be the hips, number three might be the trunk, number four is the shoulder, and number five might be the elbow or the wrist. So we generate most of our power from the larger segment, and then we transfer that load. This is the body moving at speed continuously. One, two, three, four, and five. So the last segment's already moving at speed, high velocity, for that end product. So there are three main areas, transfer of momentum, summation of forces, and order of recruitment. And what that'll do, of course, is enhance power and at the same time decrease injury, which is very important. We're going to have a look at two practical examples. The first one's a rotation movement. In rotation movement, we've got an upright spine position, nice tall trunk, basic cable rotation, no real power involved. We're now going to progress that through to an exercise where we're first recruiting from the lower body, then through the trunk, then to the later segments. In example two, we're, we're going to have a look at a pushing movement. In a pushing pattern, it's just a basic overhead shoulder movement, so no real load coming, no momentum from, from the lower body. We're now going to progress that, so we're recruiting from, from the lower body first and producing momentum and power in the upper body.